happening in our country, specifically also uh, in New York City, where uh, they are seeing major stress levels happening. He, uh, the New York City mayor, uh, Democrat um, Eric Adams, even went as far as to say last month that he said that the migrant crisis could destroy New York City here. So we're going to get a breakdown of what is happening at the border and just how much like a city in New York City, if they're having problems uh, as big as their city is, what would happen if this happened to smaller towns and what would happen to the infrastructure and help around uh, trying to help these migrants uh, in the country? So we want to bring in our uh, uh, a speaker here, our a guest this hour here on Live Now from Fox. Uh, this is uh, uh, immigration attorney Lucia Camargo, attorney and partner of Heyman Woodward Law Firm. Thanks so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. Mike, it's my pleasure being here. Thank you so much for having me one more time in your program. Yes, uh, no problem. So let's get right into it here. Uh, we are seeing uh, these uh, videos really come out on a daily basis happening in New York City. And uh, politicians uh, there are, are demanding help uh, for, on the federal side that they need way more assistance uh, that they are getting. Uh, what do you think about that? Mike, I really believe that this is an immigrant crisis. And because of that, this has to be an unity effort that should involve all the entities, the federal government, the city, the states, but also the community. I, deli I don't believe that there is just one answer to this major problem. On the co contrary, it's a long standing effort that should involve every single person that is living here in America. And then I really think that we have to target two situations, to deal with the current situation and also what measures can be taken in order to continue uh, fostering these flux of immigrants into the United States. One of those could be awareness, which would be uh, who is uh, the, the people that are inviting these, these immigrants here? What is the message that they are receiving? Are they aware that they cannot, that the city or the sanctuary cities cannot shelter them? Are they aware if they are asylum seekers that once they get here in the United States, they have to wait for additional 180 days to get a work authorization permit? What if that money that they are going to pay to these people that bring them here and probably the, the, the savings of uh, an entire life is better giving to uh, a non-profit, uh, a law firm that can give legal advice to them to bring them properly to the United States. There are 178 type of visas for bringing foreign nationals into these countries. It could be people even with no skills that are needed in the fields, construction sites, etc. So I really believe that uh, we need to start supporting the government, the nonprofit organizations. We can even volunteer. We can advocate for a policy change. We can provide legal assistance. We can donate supplies. We can donate our time. We can educate these people. We can uh, learn, uh, uh, teach, for instance, the little, the little ones the language. I think it's very important to communicate and to inform, but we really need to get involved in order to be part of the solution. Sure, sure. You know, and it seems like a lot of uh, areas want to help. Uh, New York City wants to help, and uh, but it just doesn't seem like the infrastructure is there right now and you know you see images uh it's so unfortunate uh, the images that you see of just you know migrants hanging out on the streets and uh, at the end of the day i mean where is the human dignity in that where we're trying to help them but the, you just see them laying on the street like a like a like a homeless person and where is the help there that breaks my heart. We are talking not only uh, regarding adults or children, even babies. So again, no matter how small is our contribution, I really believe that if we start getting involved in the situation, 
we can make a significant difference in the lives of these migrants. And this is not an issue for, for the city, it's not an issue for the state, it's not an issue for the federal government and the federal agencies. I think we need to find a solution, even considering moving these uh, foreign nationals, probably to other states, to other cities, and everybody has to embrace the, and welcome uh, these people because they are here. And for humanitarian reasons, we all have to remember that this is a country that has been made of immigrants. Probably we were there at some point and somebody had the, the, um, had the heart to, to support us. Uh, another option could be to mentor these foreign nationals when they get the work authorization permit, even to train them, to uh, allow them to do some internships. We can get him involved in how to support these people when they are able to apply for jobs, to secure a job so they can have a decent life. I think there are several layers in the problem, but several things that can be done. I have no doubt. And I really encourage these foreign nationals to look for legal assistance before they take the decisions. And of course, if we want to go deeper, we have to discuss foreign policy, what the countries out there can do in order to have to retain their own people that have amazing skills, stability, political situations. There are many things that uh, I think can be discussed, but because it's a crisis, I really encourage everybody to step back and start thinking what can we do as a community, at least at the current moment. And then it is going to be up to the government to see how they can prevent this. I know one option that probably I think could alleviate the situation will be that USCIS will consider giving them work authorization permit without having these people to wait for the six month period. I know that it's not easy. First of all, because it needs a logistic inside the system to be able to generate the work authorization permits. And I also understand that this could incentivate more people to come here because they know that they are going to receive the work authorization permit. But at least can be done at the present moment and then release some information indicating that it's not going to happen moving forward. These are just ideas, but I think everybody in their own fields can generate some ideas, be creative and participate in the immigration policy. Do we need an immigration reform? For sure. The governments, they need more integration among them. There are disagreements between them. So we need to work this in unity. I really think it's the only way to overcome this complicated situation. It's another challenge, but I really believe that if we address the crisis together, we are with persistence and empathy, we are able to make a significant difference in the lives of these people. And uh, Lucia, yeah, you're, you're so right when you said it's a complicated process here. My last question to you is, uh, what do you have to say, uh, uh, what do is the messaging around, uh, you know, legal immigrants that have been here and they took the proper channels and for some it took years uh, to come here, but they, they did it the right way. And now what they're seeing is, um, you know, this rush, this border surge of people just really skipping the line and uh, then almost demanding work when they had to come here their own way and uh, set up shop and not have any jobs, but they had to find it their own way. What do you say to those immigrants here that are here legally that have a big beef about what's going on right now? I really I believe that, as you said, it's very challenging because we have a segment of immigrants that come here in the proper way that really have made an effort to secure a job, to receive the uh, work authorization permit, the travel document, to travel overseas, and have been very patient to get there because remember that in the past, before pandemic, it took between three to six months to get the work authorization permit. There has been families that have waited for 
12, 15, 18 months to get the work authorization permit, exhausting all the, the resources. Uh, and I really understand that it's very difficult to digest when you have done things in the proper way. But unfortunately, this is the reality that we are facing. And uh, these people that are coming here in, most, in, in the majority is because they lack options and opportunities on their own countries. And the situation is getting more complicated day by day. So uh, sometimes it's a matter of surviving. They came here indeed because there are no options out there. So that's why this should be an ongoing conversation, not only at the domestic level, but also in an international level as well. So, so true. Lucia, thanks so much uh, for coming on here on Live Now from Fox and uh, breaking down the issue uh, at hand uh, as it continues to be an issue really on a uh, not only daily basis, but hourly basis there as well. So we appreciate your thoughts and uh, thanks so much uh, for coming on. We always appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. It's always very really nice seeing you. Thank you so much. Yes, you too. Take care. And everyone, uh, we will be taking our second break here of this hour. Stay right here with us. More to come on Live Now from Fox and continue to take a look here at the stock sell-off right now. 311 points already in the red. Uh, we will continue to